Hello, Polite Conversation here. If you like this content, please like the video and subscribe for more content every week. Today, I will be attempting to explain um, the spiritual experiences of some people. Uh, when you use reason and arguments against a lot of Christians especially, they may say, there might not be a physical reason to believe in God, but I have experienced him on a personal level. Um, and, you know, I don't really want to take that away from people, but I definitely want people to review why they believe what they do. Um, so first, uh, in Bible class recently, we have been learning about Reformed doctrine. Um, I have heard that many people in the United States and especially around the world do not even know what Reformed doctrine necessarily is. Um, it descended from the teachings of John Calvin, who believed that people were 100% predestined. God controls who goes to heaven, who goes to hell. Your salvation is not because of you, not because of your free will, um, but because of God's decision. And that obviously brings up some questions. Why does God pr uh, predestine people to hell in the first place? Uh, why did God make Adam and Eve eat the fruit? Because if you believe in 100% sovereignty, that's what you believe. Um, I think it. what most people believe about predestination, God basically boils down to kind of a sadis sadistic uh, person who's kind of just creating humans for his own entertainment. That's kind of what predestination makes God out to be. Um, but today we will not be talking about this. We'll be talking about um, this belief and its effect on uh, spirituality. So um, these reformers, they believe that you don't choose to be saved. God sends the Holy Spirit on you, and then you're led to believe in Christ, and that's how you're saved. Um, and this is kind of, it doesn't line up well with the New Testament version, which is um, the apostles, they came to know Jesus, and then Jesus sent his uh, Holy Spirit on them, although you could interpret the text in a different way. Um, but this, uh, this distinction or this contradiction between these two beliefs is very important. Some people believe the Holy Spirit comes before. Some people believe the Holy Spirit comes after. Um, now, this, this might cause some questions in your mind. And one of them that I had was, is the Holy Spirit even real? If the Holy Spirit's presence isn't even that strong that you don't even know if it comes on you before or after, is it really there at all? Is there any effect at all? Another thing to realize with um, people's spiritual experiences, um, you kind of need to go in deeper um, and see what they really are. Usually they're just like an inward feeling. And I don't know if you guys are um, acquainted with the uh, placebo effect, but your mind has more power than you realize. When you were a kid, uh, if you watched a scary movie, even now if I watch a scary movie, um, you start to think. You look around the corner. You look around the tree. Is there an axe murderer? Your brain functions in a way that you believe actually, and your body reacts in this way, that there is actually an axe murderer around the next tree. And that's how your biology responds. That's how your brain responds. And that's important to see. That even happens today. If you believe in God, your brain will function in a way in which you feel God. And another thing to realize is even if it's not a personal experience, when people go to church, they feel something. And I think that this can basically be boiled down to a social experience. Um, I go to church and I'm obviously a skeptic. And... I feel something, I feel something, but I don't think it's God. I don't necessarily know it's God. I believe there might be a God, but I definitely think that social interaction can explain that feeling. You and a group of people all in one place, all with a common mission, that's powerful. It doesn't necessarily matter what the belief is, but that you all are believing it and striving for it in that one moment. And that's very powerful 
but it doesn't necessarily prove um, that God is real. And even if you believe that it proves God is real, it doesn't necessarily exclude other religions because other religions have similar experiences. Um, so yes, another thing. Um, people often describe their spiritual experiences as something that cannot be explained away. But look at the um, substance of marijuana. Many people, actually, a lot of people who I've come into contact with who have smoked um marijuana and have done other drugs, they describe it as the most spiritual experience they have ever had. Um, and I'm not saying that your spiritual experience is in insignificant, but it probably is, unless if it's something super spectacular. And then there are other explanations for it, I believe. Maybe there aren't. Um, and then another thing, in art, we learn about an artist. I don't necessarily remember what his name was, but he was famous for creating uh, pieces of art, a uh, large piece of art that people could walk into. And it kind of, he could control the atmosphere. He could control how people feel um, through the ways light comes through the windows and through other factors. And so if your emotions are that, they're, they're so easily manipulated. Do you honestly believe that the only explanation for that feeling inside your gut when you get in church, do you think the only explanation for that is God? Um, if you like this video, please comment down below and subscribe. I will see you guys next week and have a good week.